Ojolo is one of the world's most successful white collar criminals. He absconded with, we think now, $8 billion a decade ago. Um, it's an incredible story. He basically persuaded the then Prime Minister of Malaysia, Najib Razak, to allow him to run an investment fund. And he used the money to build a Hollywood empire. He, he uh, made the film The Wolf of Wall Street. He actually ended up dating your very own Miranda Kerr in Australia. Um, and he, he acted like he was a billionaire, but the money was all stolen. Now, he appears to have eluded authorities for years now, but you believe you know where he is? Yeah, he went on the run about six years ago now after indictments came down in the US and in, in Malaysia for his arrest. Um, and so he's been believed to be in China all that time, but we've actually managed to track him down more specifically. Uh, my, my, my colleague Bradley Hope and I, we have a company called Project Brazen, and we have, um, we've been able to find him in Shanghai. What we did was we pulled corporate records in China. We knew he had companies there. And we were able to find that recently one of his companies had changed ownership to a British Virgin Island company. And astoundingly, that company has $300 million in, in capital. So he's still got um, a, a lot of money. Um, and also the, the BVI company showed us that he was, he was in the Shanghai Financial Center, which is one of the the poshest and, and most well-known buildings in Shanghai. So he's, despite having indictments, he's still protected in China. Have there been any actual Jolo sightings in Shanghai or elsewhere in China? Yeah, we put out a call for people to send uh, photos to us anonymously. And we, we, we got a photo of him in the Shanghai Disneyland where he's just hanging out with friends and, and having a, having a, a lunch. Um, he was also sighted in Macau, obviously another Chinese enclave. Um, and with that, we have a source who, who was able to tell us more about that photo, and he actually has a Chinese handler in the photo. So he's protected by China. I mean, it's, it's a kind of a complicated story, but the reason he's, he's protected is he's, he knows a lot about Chinese corruption as well. And so the Chinese state doesn't really want to see him back in Malaysia or the U.S. to face, to face charges. And what do you know about his movements within China or in and out of the country? How hard is he trying to keep a low profile? Well, we have a very good source in, in China that tells us that he's able to move pretty freely inside the country. Um, China makes the argument that, it, that the U.S. has a, a number of people that it wants to have back in China to, to face ju justice, including this guy, Miles Kwok, who lives in, on Central Park South in New York City. And so they say, why is it any different for us to keep Jolo? You know, you've got one of our billionaires that we think is corrupt. We've got, we've got one. We've got a guy that, you, that is indicted in America. Um, but... However, it's Malaysians that really want him back because he's stolen billions of dollars of Malaysian money. Malaysia has an election coming up and he's still got control of a lot of it. So it's actually becoming a political issue there in Malaysia. And the company that you say Jolo runs in China, it's an, as you said, it's not exactly a small, low-key business either. No, it's called Grace Grace Zenith. Well, that's, that's the BVI's name. Um, the, the, comp the company in China has a Chinese name. It recently changed its name. And it's on the, as I said, it's on the 28th floor of the Shanghai World Financial Center on, on, the, on the Pudong side of the Bund. Um, and that's, you know, that's the iconic building with a hole in it that, that, that's very well known in Shanghai. And so he's, he's always liked to have offices in these, these, these premier places. He used to have an office in the Twin Towers in Kuala Lumpur. So, yeah, I think he's, be, he's able to operate pretty freely. And, and it's a testament to the kind of high level um, support that he has in China. Oh, and why do you think he's yet to be formally located by Interpol or Malaysian air authorities? You say he's got a lot of support in China, but how hard are Malaysian authorities trying to get this information? Well, according to our Chinese source, who's, as I said, is a very high level government source, the, the Malaysian government isn't looking for him at all. And the reason is that the Malaysian government is, is ruled by the, the UMNO party, of former Prime Minister Najib Razak, who's now in jail for his connections to Jolo. And there are a lot of people in that government who are incredibly worried about um, what would happen if Jolo were to come back to Malaysia and start answering all kinds of questions about all the other kinds of people who were involved with him for many years. It's, it's, a, it's a national disgrace, and um, they're not really looking for him very, very uh, seriously. And in your research, what else have you discovered about Jolo's alleged involvement in the 1MDB scandal? Well, the, the Chinese element is just fascinating. He, when he, after he went on the run, um, obviously China has this Belt and Road Infrastructure Program where it's building infrastructure all over the world. And um, Jolo was involved in trying to get a, an infrastructure project in Malaysia happening. 
with Chinese money, and they and he he connived with very senior Chinese officials to steal a bunch of more money um, while he was in China through those infrastructure projects. Those officials, very senior level officials, have been either arrested. One of them was recently sentenced to death, actually. So clearly, that didn't go up to the very, very top levels. But um, they, but China still won't hand him over. And so this is becoming an increasingly uh, fraught issue. And I think, I think at some point, if especially if in Malaysia they have elections in November, if the government were to change and a new government were to seek him, it could become more of a, a diplomatic issue between Malaysia um, and uh, China. And with this information that you've uncovered, what do you hope will happen? What do you think will happen to Jolo now? Um, I don't think anything will happen right now, just because, as I said, I think the Malaysian government is too... There's too many people in the Malaysian government who are scared. I mean, I think increasingly Malaysia, ordinary Malaysians are starting to realise that this is, a, this is a, a national disgrace, as I said, and that, like, this is one of the largest ever white-collar crimes and that they're on the hook, that, and generations of Malaysians will be on the hook for money. Uh, you know, you don't repay $8 billion stolen dollars overnight. And so I, I do think at some point you're going to see increased pressure um, from Malaysian people on, on their own government to do some, to actually make proper inroads with the Chinese to try to get him back. But I, like I said, until there's a change of government, uh, I don't think that's very likely to happen. And what do Chinese people think about it? You've put posters of Jolo up um, asking people to give information. What's the reception been like? Well, I have no insight. I'm based in Singapore. I have no insight into what's going on inside China. Yes, we did. We created a, a poster with information, uh, photos, the photos that we recently received of him in Shanghai Disneyland and in Macau and others, other photos, and we put out some information. But I don't know how widely that has been disseminated inside China. Obviously, there's a firewall and it's very difficult to get information out there. Um, and so I don't know, I mean, Ch Chinese people probably aren't reading. Uh, we have a whale hunting blog where we put on a lot of information about this. I don't know whether they're, they're reading that. Uh, so it's hard for me to say. But uh, surely, but this has become a big issue in Malaysia, especially in the last few weeks. And just, just to reiterate, you don't think he'll ever face trial for his alleged involvement in the 1MDB scandal? Well, after years of doing investigative reporting, you can become a cynic. And so it's very easy to, to say no, to say, yes, I agree with you. You will never face justice. I mean, you know, plenty of uh, white collar criminals never get uh, convicted and they continue to live off, their, live off their lives, including some very senior Goldman Sachs bankers in this case that, that, that weren't punished for what they did. And so uh, I, think, I think it's unlikely in the short term, but um, never say never. Well, it's fascinating, the work that you're doing. Tom Wright, thanks so much for talking to us tonight. It's really interesting. Thank you.